Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. Now, I bet you're tired of watching your swing and in the downswing, you see that club shaft a little steep. You see your hips move toward the ball, a little early extension. You stand up and then worst of all, to add a little insult to injury, get a little bit of flip in there so the ball just kind of floats off the face. It really doesn't get the power and the compression of what you're seeing the pros do. Now there's one simple move that's gonna change this. It actually has to do with your belt buckle and how you rotate your hips properly in the downswing. Now most players that do this think, well, I'm not flexible enough to get more open in the swing. I'm not flexible enough to get the club coming from the inside. And it's actually not the case. You'll find that you're flexible enough, but it's the proper movement of the hips that nobody's walked you through before that's gonna allow you to get into this. So let me go ahead and share this secret with you. I can't wait to do this video. I know it's gonna help your swing a ton. All right, so let's jump in here and get started. Now, let me talk about something called anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. Now, if I'm tilting this way, I'd be an anterior tilt, meaning tilting forward. You see how my, my belt here is angled down to the ground. If I tilted this way, I'd be posterior tilt and tucking my, my butt under uh, my chest like that. Now, when you're standing up and flipping, you're getting that tilt under. Now, that's complicated words. I don't want to get people confused talking anterior, posterior, all these different words. Think of it as your belt buckle. When I turn my pelvis down and I kind of stick my back this way, my belt buckle is now facing the ball. When I turn my belt buckle up, my glutes fire, my hamstrings fire, and that turns my pelvis this way and that gets me standing up. Now, I will tell you the reason that you're not, uh, you're not out of the norm for doing this is because if I do tuck my butt under and stand up out of my posture, I can throw this club at the ball and I can get pretty decent speed doing it that way. So it feels powerful. The results aren't terrible when you're talking about swing speed. You can hit some good shots that way and it can give you the false idea that that's the ideal way to do it. Let me walk you through the progression on doing this the right way though, so that you can finally get that club shallowed out. You can finally get your body opened up and you can do it in a way that feels easy. It doesn't feel stressed out at all. So I want you to go ahead and get your belt buckle down toward the ground. Now I don't want to have the, a real big arch in the back. It's just a little bit down toward the, toward the ball. It's really probably pointing out toward those three golf balls over there somewhere. So it's a slight angle. Now as I go to the top of my swing, as I start down, I'm keeping that angle and at the same time, here's a big one, I'm keeping some flex in my legs. If I want to rotate my body open, I have to have flex in my legs. As soon as I tuck my butt under, lock my knees, I can't rotate no matter how hard I try. My entire lower body's locked up. So I want to have my belt buckle down slightly. I want to have my knees flexed. And what that allows me to do is to rotate through the shot. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this with your right knee. The old school way is to say, kick this knee in. Feel like your right knee drives toward the target. Unfortunately, that will get you to slide instead of rotate. I want you to feel like your right knee goes forward, kind of behind the golf ball. So as I start my downswing, that knee is going this way. Now I'm in a really bent knee position where I could drive off of that and open my body. My left knee does something really important too. As I come down, it starts to open up. If my left knee stays facing this golf ball, it's gonna be very difficult for me to get my hips open because this is really jammed in here. I need to feel like when I start down, my left knee comes out and now I'm in a position to where when I post, I can rot rotate my hips very easily. Also notice how my right foot is gonna come off the ground. So if I do this properly, I get this little squat motion, my right knee comes out and as I come to contact, my heel is up. For years, I was told to keep my heel on the ground and I looked like this at contact. And man, I struggled and struggled and struggled and I tried to get my hips more open. I tried to get my hips more open. I just couldn't do it. I wasn't flexible enough. And then I found out, well, most people aren't when they do this with their foot and they lock that right leg. I can't rotate now, everything's jammed up. I need to feel like I'm here, belt buckle down, right knee goes out, left knee opens. This gets me rotating. And then as I come through contact, now my foot comes off the ground. Look at those hips. I can open as much as you want me to open there. It's easy. So I'm only gonna open about 45 degrees, but if I get that knee action, I get that knee movement, that can make it really easy to get in those positions that you see the pros getting into. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, hit that one right down the pipe. Very solid.
Now there's a few common setup issues that I see time and time again, and I think it stems from the ax motion. It feels really powerful when we have a golf club. Let's imagine this is a golf club for a second. If I feel like I'm gonna hit this golf ball and I bring this thing over my head and I chop down into the golf ball, it feels like I have tons and tons of power, tons and tons of speed. I feel like I could have chopped that golf ball in two. And I think every golfer from when they begin, when they very begin to start playing, they wanna feel that really powerful motion. Well, in golf, unfortunately, that doesn't really work. Instead of having that over the head chop type motion, and I'll fix that, don't worry about the tee, you need to be coming from the inside, get the club in the slot, and then feel like you can deliver that club with a good path to have tons of power and tons of speed. If we continue to set up in ways that get us into that chopping type position, we're gonna lose speed, we're gonna lose distance. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three of the most common setup myths, setup problems, that get you into that chopping position rather than being into a powerful position where we can get into the slot. Once you get set up the right way, you're gonna hit the ball a lot farther. All right, so let's jump right in here. Let's talk about the first issue that can really wreak havoc on your speed. And if I'm kind of imagining that powerful feeling of me coming down and chopping into this golf ball, we all know we don't wanna do that, but it feels so good doing that. If I visualize that, one thing that I'll do with my setup is I'll set up in a position where I would have a lot of power coming down in this angle. And if you notice my shoulders, so if I was to put a golf club across my shoulders here, this would be level with the ground. This would be a little tilt away from the target, my head getting farther behind the ball, my spine being kind of angled away from the golf ball. That's really good. But if I'm set up in a way that I feel like I'm gonna come down into this golf ball really powerfully, a lot of times what will happen is my shoulders will get level. I'll get too far kind of to the left if you're looking at my shoulders. And now I'm in this position that feels like I can slam down in this golf ball with a lot of speed, with a lot of, a lot of energy, but it really just doesn't work in golf. So that's the first key. What I want you to do Go ahead right now, even if you're not on the driving range, grab a club, grab a broom, whatever you have to do, follow right along with me on this. And this is really gonna help a ton. Put a club across your shoulders. So hold it right on the tips of your shoulders here. Go ahead and bend forward into your posture. And then I'm gonna feel like my belt buckle goes a little forward toward the target. My upper body gets a little bit more behind it here. My head's behind the golf ball. My chest is behind the golf ball. And you're gonna notice how I create a little bit of an angle with my club there. So just a slight angle is plenty. I don't have to go like this and go really a ton. But what I want you to do is set up very level, and then I want you to tilt away, let's call that about 10 degrees or so with my shoulder angle. Doesn't have to be more than that, a little more, a little less, not a big deal. So go ahead and do that about 15 to 20 times just to get comfortable getting behind that golf ball, just like this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with my golf club, repeating that same action. So here I'm setting up, I'm getting a little tilt away, and now all of a sudden, I've tilted everything much more to the inside. I've created this big area right here where I can swing my hands and arms from the inside. I can get that club into the slot and that's gonna make it a lot easier to create the real speed that we need and not that over the top type speed. Let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna hinge forward, a little tilt to my shoulders. My head is behind the golf ball. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, nice draw right down the left side of the fairway. All right, now the second piece of this is gonna be a little trick with your elbow. If you get your elbow in the right position, it makes it so much easier to come down from the slot, come down from the inside like we're talking about to get rid of that ax chop type move that kills our distance, kills our power. So what we're gonna do here, and the way I want you to do this, go ahead and set up to the golf ball. If you're in your living room, just set up to imaginary golf ball, either way is fine. And I'm gonna get in my shoulder tilt first. Now I'm gonna get about 10 or 15 degrees or so of shoulder tilt like I talked about. And then from there, that's when I'm gonna add my hand. So if I add my right hand from this position, it's gonna be much more under or from the inside when I'm adding the right hand. That helps me to get my shoulders a little more square to the target. It helps promote that tilt. It helps promote me coming more from the inside when I'm doing that. So if you look at my palm of my right hand, it's gonna feel much more underneath the club versus if I'm too level with my shoulders and I add the right hand on there, now all of a sudden my palm is on top of the club. That's what's called a weak grip. And it's very easy for that to turn into a slice or kind of chop down over the top move. So get in the tilt, 15 or 20 reps, add the right hand in there, and then we're gonna close our grip. So a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to have the hand way under here like this, like I'll see some people really trying to exaggerate it. Just get a little bit to the right. If you're looking for a few key checkpoints there, I'm looking for the index finger and my thumb. If I cinch those together, that's gonna to be pointed roughly toward my right shoulder. So that's when you know you're getting about the right amount of it. It should look something like that. 
The second piece of this right hand trick is what I talked about with the elbow. A big mistake when you get your shoulders too level. I'm gonna put this hand on top, palm down, and now my elbow pit is pointed toward the target. That sets me up way too level with my shoulders, way too far to the left, and I really have nothing I can do from this position rather than to chop down over the top and really make a weak swing here. So as I'm adding my right hand, I wanna feel like my elbow, if I look at a, the, the pointy part of my elbow, the bottom of my elbow, I'm gonna feel like it's in toward my hip a little bit when I'm doing that. Now you can also see from this position, if I'm looking from down the line, how that's a little bit under my right forearm. So I'm exaggerating here so you can see that on camera, but this is under or lower. This would be over top. I don't want this or I'm gonna really chop down into it. So set up, get your tilt, add your right hand, palm up, and then feel like that elbow is kind of towards your hip there. Now I'm in a powerful position where I can really get it inside from the slot and get that great, really athletic setup. Now the third piece of this really athletic, powerful setup is gonna be my stance. And I see players all the time go wrong with this and it's actually become some pretty common instruction uh, the last few years is we want our stance fairly narrow or just shoulder width apart. Now, we could argue that, but there's a great test for this. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and set up to the golf ball, and I want you to start with your stance really, really narrow. Just have your feet almost together, touching. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a swing now, and I'm gonna try to kill this golf ball. I'm gonna try to hit it absolutely as hard as I can and see how far I can hit my driver. I'm even gonna get my tilts and everything like I was trying to do with my shoulders and my arm, and let's see what happens. I smoked that one. That's about as good as I can hit one swinging from that way. Down the right center of the fairway, according to my flight scope, I swung 107 miles an hour and about as daggone good as I could hit one. I hit one 280, so not too bad. If everything else in your body is working well, if your hands, arms, shoulders, all that is delivering the club properly, you can do a lot of things with the lower body wrong and still get some good distance like I was talking about there, what I showed there. Now what I want you to do is gradually widen that stance up. Let me grab a couple golf balls here. And I'm gradually gonna go wider and wider until I found my, find my most athletic stance width. So you don't have to listen to me. I don't have to, I'm not the, in charge of exactly what you have to do. Find out for yourself. Start very narrow and then go wider and wider in your stance until you feel like you're the most athletic. For you, let's say you have this really wide, powerful stance like this, that's okay, as long as you move your feet a little bit, that's gonna be completely fine. You can set up that way and still be really good. What I've found for most players is they like to set up, and I've tested this with quite a few players, a little wider than shoulder width apart. So if I stand straight up and down, you can see about how wide my feet are here. If I drew a line vertically from the ankle, it would be outside my shoulders, both my right foot and my left foot. This is about the most athletic I can get from my own personal stance. This is about the width that I see for most players. So a couple inches wider than your shoulders is perfect. Look at Rory McIlroy, the longest pound for pound hitter on the PGA Tour. You're gonna see a nice wide stance like this. This is athletic. My legs are bent. I feel like I could really drive off the ground when I'm doing this. Now, the one thing you don't wanna do from here is I don't wanna keep my feet still. I don't wanna keep my feet kind of suctioned to the ground there and be swinging all arms. I have to go ahead and let my feet move. On the back swing, my left heel is gonna come up slightly. On my follow through, I'm really gonna let that right foot rotate all the way around. That's a very, very good key. But as long as I'm doing that, I can go as wide as I want and still have the movement and the, the freedom in my golf swing. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and set up what I feel like is my most, most powerful stance and let's tie all three things that I talked about together. Number one, I have a little bit of a shoulder tilt. Number two, my right hand is coming into the club a little bit more from the bottom with my right elbow pit up. Number three, I have that nice athletic wide stance, a little bit of knee bend. I feel like I'm playing shortstop here. And now I'm in a position where I can really hit this golf ball pretty daggone hard. Let's give it a whirl. All right, hit that one nicely right down the center. Hey guys, welcome to beautiful Heathrow Country Club in Lake Mary, Florida, my home course. And we're gonna talk about three tips that are really gonna help you to hit your driver much better. Now, when you get up to those holes, they got a little bit of water on them. Maybe you get to those par fives like this. It's just so much more enjoyable to smoke a driver right down the middle of the fairway and not even have to worry about being in the rough or out of bounds or that kind of thing. So we're gonna do three things that you absolutely must do to hit your best drives. Let's go and get started. 
All right, so the first piece I want to talk about is what I call snap, don't slap. So nobody wants to slap at the ball. We don't want to lose that club head speed. And when we slap at the ball, basically what that means is I'm using my hands kind of back and forth this way. Oftentimes I'll cast a little bit and then the club head outraces my hands and I end up kind of slapping at the ball. The disadvantage of that is now my club face is very inconsistent. One time it's closed, one time it's open, and I'm also gonna have a tough time getting speed from this. So let me go ahead and hit one. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this slow motion video that's gonna come up here in a second. So I'm gonna try to slap at this ball, really cast it from the top. Yeah, and I hit that, I hooked that ball 40 yards to the left, almost onto the road. Hopefully I didn't hit a car over there, but it's very difficult to be consistent when I'm doing that. There's no way I can hit a fairway when I'm swinging this way. What's happening is, if we look at our wrist, and we kind of put them in front of us. If I bend my wrist to the right this way, this would be flexion with my left wrist. It's called extension with the right wrist. We don't need to know those terms. That would be to the right and then back to the left. A lot of times people think we need to get speed by doing this and by kind of pushing the club through to help to accelerate it. When I do that, that starts to flip the club, to slap the club, and it's gonna outrace my hands. Anytime the club head gets in front of your hands before contact, you are dead in the water. It is gonna be almost impossible to have control of that club face. When it outraces them, it becomes very, very unstable. That's a slap motion, and that's exactly what you're seeing here. Now, a snap motion is very diff different. I still want that club to release, so I wanna have some lag. I wanna get that club to whip on through. It's snapping, I'm getting that speed at the bottom, but it's when I'm doing that and how I'm doing that that's gonna make a world of difference. So as I'm about halfway in my downswing, You'll notice that's my, what we call our maximum lag position. So in that max lag, now I've created this big angle with my hands and my arms. My body's going ahead and opening up, and as I continue down, now my club still has a pretty good size angle in it. If you look at the butt end of this club, if you imagine a laser beam kind of shooting out of there, it's not turned back up yet. My club isn't pointing back up toward my body. It's pointing out kind of down the fairway. Now from here, to get that club to really release, I want to snap the club head. That's when I'm going to start turning this club head back up or this grip back up to release the club head and to get a lot of speed from the club head there. So that's what we call the snap action. You can call it the release. You can call it whatever you want to. And the big key to really put this together that we talk about in the top speed golf system is I want this to release about 45 degrees in front of me. So if I imagine a line going from my chest 45 degrees out in front, whenever that club gets fully released, now it's gonna be pointing in that direction. So I'm still letting that club whip on through or snap through, but it's not a slap. I'm letting that happen in front of the golf ball and now my club is just kind of trailing along behind. The golf ball is just getting in the way. I'm releasing out in front and that impact is just happening. So let me go ahead and hit one here the correct way. We'll show you some in slow motion. I'll give you a couple tips on how to do this exactly. There we go, hit that one great, right down the middle of the fairway. I got that lag, and then I got that to release out in front. Now in the first one, we talked about how we didn't want to push with the, the hands or wrist, because now my club head outraces my hands and it gets really unstable. In this one, now I'm, I'm taking my hands here down at the ball. You'll notice my right wrist is angled back in what we call wrist extension, or my knuckles back to my elbow. I'm gonna feel like my palm of my hand is still facing down to the ground. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and feel like I do this motion. So if I'm casting a, a fishing pole, my thumb goes from up to really going down this way. That's what's called ulnar deviation or just a casting or a flip type motion. I'm doing that way down here at the ball in that type of a direction. So my hand isn't going this way and cupping, it's going down, just like I'm doing this with a fishing pole. And now as I do that in front of the golf ball, that's gonna release that club. Notice how here, both my wrists are nice and straight. There's no bend in those at all. If I was flipping, that would look like this as I'm coming through impact. And my wrist would be cupped here and it would be bent back, bent forward like that with this other hand. That's gonna to lead to a lot of inconsistency if you're doing that. So let's pause just before impact. We've got a nice angle, this wrist is flat. At this point, my thumb is pulled back toward my body I've got all this lag, and then we're gonna pause in the straight line release in the top speed golf system, and we're gonna work on this thumb being down. So I went from the up to down. That's that whip action that's happening through there. That's that snap. And when I do this correctly, I feel like I'm just gonna take the bottom two inches of this grip, 
with my bottom two fingers. That's where I'm going to feel the pressure there. And I'm just going to snap the shaft, snap that grip right off the club. That's going to help with a ton of speed. So let's go ahead and pause and do that about 15, 20 times. Pausing here and then boom, releasing that, pausing here, wrist nice and flat, wrist turned down. After we've done that about 20 times, let's get that same feeling and more of a full swing, just a practice swing there. So we're not gonna hit any balls yet, we're just gonna get used to that feeling, and then we can go ahead and take it on out to the driving range and start hitting some shots and then out onto the course. All right, so that's piece number one, snap, don't slap. Piece number two, where it's the same old saying we've heard for a long time, but with the new twist, we're gonna tee it high and let it fly. Now the reason you wanna tee this ball high is a couple of things. So first off, if I have a great drive, what's happening are two things. Number one, I'm gonna hit this ball a little bit higher on the club face. Now as I start to hit it a little higher on the club face, there's actually more loft on the top of your driver. Your driver isn't flat like a, like a sheet of metal. It's actually rounded. If, you're, if you were to take this and bring this out into a full circle. It actually makes about a three foot circle is how the, the face is curved. So it has a slight curve to it, meaning at the bottom of the driver, you're gonna have a lot less loft. This is an eight and a half degree driver. At the bottom, there's probably five or six degrees, four degrees, something like that. At the top, there's probably 12 or 13 degrees. So if I hit it at the top of the face, it's gonna launch higher. That's great for distance. That's what we really want. The second piece is, as I make contact higher, it actually has a gear effect and the ball is stuck to the face and actually puts a little top spin, not really top spin, just less back spin, and it gets the ball to knuckle through the air. That's a real key for high, long drives. The higher I can hit it, hitting it on the top of the face, and the less spin I can have, also hitting on the top of the face, means the longer drives that I'm gonna have. That's the first piece. The second piece to this is I actually wanna be swinging up on the ball. Again, if I'm coming down on it, I'm kind of swiping across the ball, and now I'm getting all this backspin. The ball wants to shoot up, kind of float in the air, and then fall out of the sky. You don't get any kind of good distance. But if I can set this ball up where I'm actually swinging up on it, now again, it's gonna promote that higher launch, and it's gonna promote that lower spin. So the more I can hit up on this golf ball, the better I'm gonna be for creating as much distance as I can. Well, if I have the ball low on the ground, let's imagine this ball is barely teed up on the ground, just like this, it's teed up on the turf. If I swing up, if I try to hit up on this, now I'm gonna miss over top of the ball. No way to make it happen. Plus there's no way to hit it anywhere but the bottom of the face. So I want this ball teed up nice and high so that I can hit it on an ascending angle, on an upward angle, and still make contact with the top of the face. Now with your iron shots, it's gonna be on the ground. We're gonna to have to hit down on it. If we had the luxury of teeing up iron shots, we'd do the same thing, but we don't. We have to hit it off the ground. That's why you hit down and take a divot with your irons. That's the easiest way to hit it off the ground, and that's why this is different with the driver. So a couple things that we want to note here, and I'll show you some slow motion video with this also. I'm going to play this up in my stance slightly. I got the ball teed up. For me, I like to have it at least a half a ball above the club or a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and tee this on about three quarters of the golf ball sticking up above the crown. I'm gonna have that a little bit up in my stance. If I really wanna get one, get a hold of one, get some extra different distance, I'm gonna play it up here toward my front foot. Again, that's gonna help promote me hitting it on the upswing. And then number three, I'm gonna visualize in my mind that I'm gonna go ahead and knock it off the top of the face. I don't wanna get anywhere near the bottom of the face or it's gonna kill my distance. So I put the ball up in my stance, I've got it teed up nice and high, and now I'm gonna feel like I'm swinging up on the ball and de-lofting the face so that I still get that high knuckler, almost a little bit of top spin on the ball is the way that you wanna think about this. So if I do those things, man, that's really gonna help me to increase my distance. That one felt great. Big high ball, knuckled through the wind, really nice shot. Now I saved the best for last. I know a lot of you guys out there are having those balls that slice if you get into any kind of wind or you struggle at all with distance, that slice is actually just gonna eat up your distance really, really badly. So if I wanna hit it farther, I've gotta hit a little bit of a draw or at least dead straight shot if I wanna get the maximum distance on there. That's gonna get the least amount of spin. That's gonna help the ball to really launch pretty fast. So when I'm setting up to this golf ball, a lot of times what I have people visualize is that they're coming through and the face is really square. And they imagine they're just gonna kinda of pull this club through square and the ball's gonna go right down the middle of the fairway. And when they have that visualization in their mind, because they struggle a little bit with a slice, the ball just tails off to the right and tends to slice. If you feel like you're gonna hit it square and 90% of the time it's either fading or slicing, this is really gonna help you. 
So I want to imagine the club face, imagine that, that piece of metal is going to wrap around the outside of the ball. So if I'm looking at this golf ball from my perspective and I kind of put a line through the middle of the ball, that would be dead square. If I hit right on that line, that would be a square shot. Now when we do that, like we just talked about, we tend to slice. That means my club was actually a little bit on the inside of that line. What I want you to feel like you're doing is to get that club to wrap around to the outside of the golf ball and hit on the outside of that line. Now what that's doing is that's closing the face a little bit more. And when you first do this, you're going to start to hit some shots to the left. That's okay. That just means you're doing a little bit too much, but that ball is going to start left and it's going to hook even a little bit more to the left, especially for you guys that are coming over the top. Now I'm getting to the outside of that ball and it's starting left going even farther left. That's all right. Let's start out on the range doing this. And I want you to hit those shots that do go to the left. And then gradually we're going to start to come a little bit more from the inside. I'm going to feel like if I'm at home plate and the second base and the baseball field is directly in front of me, I'm swinging more out toward first base or the, the visitor's dugout. And now I'm going to be releasing that club, getting it to outside the ball. So what's going to happen is the ball is going to start a little bit straighter and then it's going to draw. After you've gotten a few of these in where that ball actually starts to turn on over a decent amount, let's just tone that down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit one and really exaggerate though. I'm coming inside and out and I'm letting that face turn over. Now as I'm doing this, the feeling that I'm getting in my hands, if you go ahead and set this club up here, is that I'm taking this club and I'm twisting it just like I'm turning a clock. Like if you can imagine the butt end of the club is a clock face and I'm going to turn that, that's rolling the club. You'll notice when I do that, my left wrist bows. That's what everybody wants at impact. That really helps us what the pros are doing. And my right wrist kind of turns knuckles back this way. That's what's going to release that face as I'm doing that. So we can see that would really get that face to turn on over. I'm going to exaggerate here. Hopefully we can see this on camera, but I'm really going to get this one to swing from right to left. There we go. So we saw that one started down the middle of the fairway, hooked over to the left, almost by the trees. I'm right on track. That's what I want to have happen at first if I'm struggling with that slice. Now the second piece to this, after you've hit about 15 or 20 balls doing that, and you've got the feel for that, I'm just going to tone down a little bit. Don't let that club release quite as much to the outside of the ball, and don't swing quite as far to the right, and now you're going to have that little baby draw that everybody wants to have to get the maximum distance. All right, guys. So take those three tips. Number one, snap, don't slap. Number two, tee it high. Get that ball to launch high with low spin. And number three, get that club head to the outside of the ball to get that nice draw. All right, guys, in this video, I'll give you some awesome tips to help your drive. And one of the things we mentioned is a straight line release. And I think this is one of the most important things you can do for your golf game to let that ball get in the way and to swing through the ball instead of hitting or slapping at the ball. I want to play a preview of my straight line release video, one of the best ones that I have. All you're going to want to do is click the card that pops up on your screen or down below in the description click the link there, it's going to take you to where you can get instant access to that full video, get the straight line release in your game, and get a whole lot more consistent. Let's go and get started. A common misconception I see is that we want to create lag and we just want to hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact, and that's simply not true. In the release section, we're going to talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're going to fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms. So that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's going to create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance. Our club is moving a very long distance through contact and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're going to see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're going to see tons.